and I love comic book movies. And over the years, I've seen some great iconic comic book movies hit the big screen that just blew me away and almost made me choke my popcorn. They were so good. But we're not talking about those movies. We're talking about the comic book movies that are so awful, they make you want to go back in time so you can erase them from the history books before they became abominations against humanity and sins against your eyeballs. The first movie up is going to be Ghost Rider starring Nicolas Cage. I love Nicolas Cage. You can't go wrong with the cage. Well, actually you can. It's called Ghost Rider. And it's also called Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance because somehow the sequel to that movie was worse than the first movie. How did that happen? I don't know. Been at the door. Been at the door. <sighs> All right, if you don't tell me what I want to know, I'm going to let him out. <sighs> Now the character of the Ghost Rider is a badass, demented soul with a flaming skull and a leather jacket. And when you put Nicolas Cage into that, you're like, yeah, that could work. I could buy into that. Both movies had terrible scripts and underwhelming plots and lame action. And when you have Nicolas Cage in your movie and you can't make an entertaining movie, well, you're just not doing it right. I want to take his face off. That's my Nicolas Cage impression. So anyway, that's why I had to double dip for the number 10 spot on this list and include both Ghost Rider movies. Just, yeah. X-Men Origins Wolverine. Ah! A movie that made you want to do a berserker attack on yourself. That way you didn't have to watch the rest of the movie. Now, by the way, these animantium claws are actually butter knives. And these butter knives look better than the claws that Wolverine had in this movie. Keep in mind, they had millions of dollars to spend on these special effects. But the claws, the fucking claws, just look at them. <laughs> Uh. X-Men Origins Wolverine took all these great iconic comic book characters and tried to shoehorn them into this X-Men Origins Wolverine story and it stripped them of who they were and what they were all about. Fantastic Four starring Captain America and I'm just glad Chris Evans got an opportunity to play another comic book character later on and he got to redeem himself because he makes a hell of a lot better Steve Rogers than he does Johnny Storm. Now this version of Fantastic Four was the second movie incarnation of Fantastic Four. The first one came out in 1994 and we're just not going to talk about how shitty that was. <laughs> This version of Fantastic Four is a notch above that 1994 version, but just a notch. Why? Well, this movie had a bigger budget, but it still had the same awful script and underwhelming characters. Doom, it's clobbering time. Punisher Warzone. This is the Batman and Robin of Punisher movies. And by the way, this movie was the third attempt at a Punisher movie. The first one was with Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, even that movie was less insulting than this one. Now, actor Ray Stevenson, who plays the Punisher in this movie, I can buy into that guy being a badass vigilante. I buy that. But everything else about this movie, including the script, the action sequences, just fell off. And by the way, look at this. Ah! Yeah, Punisher Warzone. It's almost unwatchable. Actually, it is. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Part 3. Now, as my explanation for why this movie's on the list, I'm just going to tell you about my childhood backstory and my experience with these movies. Here it goes. At a young tender age, I remember coming home every day after school and watching the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on VHS. It was dark, it was violent, and it was gritty. And then you got the second installment of the franchise called Secret of the Ooze. And even as a kid, I was like, yeah, this is way lighter than the first movie, and the Ninja Turtles aren't actually using their weapons. And I was like, it's okay. You know what? And I like the Vanilla Ice song. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. It's still catchy, and I like it. So suffice it to say, when the third movie came out, I was excited to see this movie. And I remember the day like it was yesterday. As a kid, we went to this theater. I went with my grandparents. I had a big bowl of popcorn, and I was watching this movie. And I was like, this, this something's not right. This doesn't feel right. I don't like it. And by the halfway point of the movie, I think I asked to leave. And I think we did leave. I went to Chuck E. Cheese that day. It was a glorious day. And a few years later, I watched the rest of the movie, and then I came to the conclusion, wow, that was a pile of shit. 
Now if you've been watching my videos for a while, now you might have guessed that this movie would make the list. But I first want to say this before I dive into the hate for this movie. I like the first Spider-Man movie. I love the second Spider-Man movie. And I wanted this movie to be good. So it's not like I disliked Spider-Man and I was looking for reasons not to like it. I had high hopes for this movie. When I was watching this movie in the theaters in 2007, there was a guy behind me eating his popcorn with his mouth open. And I was like, ah! And then I turned around and I kept watching this movie. And I was like, why are you guys purposely trying to make it as bad as you possibly can? Now, I've read a lot of behind the scenes backstories for Spider-Man 3. And here's what I've concluded. The Sony producers were like, you know what? We want to cram as much shit into this movie at the last second as we possibly can. And director Sam Raimi, who directed all three Spider-Man movies, was like, you know what? I have a vision for this movie. I kind of want to do something good. But you know what? Fuck you, Sony producers. I'm going to make a shitty movie and cram all your stupid ideas into it at the last second. And that's what we got with Spider-Man 3. And you know what? I can live with all that other stuff, but the one thing I can't live with is the 10-minute dance scene with Tobey Maguire, Peter Parker with eyeliner on. It's like, this is a Spider-Man movie, not a musical. It's a bird! It's a plane! Oh no, it's just Superman Quest for Peace. A movie that should have never been made. Now, Superman 4 Quest for Peace is a prime example of when you have a comic book character and a franchise, and you want to continue that franchise, but you don't have any good ideas or a budget to back up those ideas, but you still go ahead and make the movie anyway. You end up making movies like Superman 4 Quest for Peace. Now, keep in mind, this was the fourth Superman movie in the franchise, and it had the smallest budget. They used the same Superman flying sequence several times throughout the movie to save money. And then you had the evil villain of the movie, Nuclear Man who is a bleach blonde guy with a perm. The next movie up is Elektra, and I'm just gonna make this one really quick, because this movie literally took me four days to watch. I watched it in 15 minute increments, because that's all I could handle. The only reason Jennifer Gardner starred in this movie is because she was contractually obligated. If you watch this movie, it just looks like she's tired throughout the whole damn thing, and you're like, she doesn't wanna be here. And you wanna know who else didn't wanna be there? The people watching the movie, because no one did. That's why it didn't make any money, it never got a sequel, no one talks about it to this day, except for me. Only because it's on my top 10 worst comic book movies of all time. Okay, let's keep going. Meow! The next, I don't know what that was. The next one up is Catwoman starring Holly Berry in one of the worst comic book adaptations of all time. Why do I say that? Well, they took the character of Selena Kyle from the comic books, who is Catwoman, and they just said, nah, 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 we're gonna take some random chick and make her Catwoman. And by make her Catwoman, I mean dress her up like a stripper with cat ears. So the number one worst comic book movie on my list is Batman and Robin. I'm sure a lot of you seen that coming, but you know what? This needs to be done. Now if you go back and watch some behind the scenes footage of Batman and Robin, well, no one wanted to be there. Everyone was there for a paycheck, and they literally only made this movie to sell more toys. The movie was stuffed full with nothing but campy one-liners. His name is Bane. A laundry service that delivers. Wow. Underwhelming action scenes. <laughs> and a bat suit with nipples. What the fuck were they thinking? And then the movie takes other badass villainous characters like Bane. And what do they do? Well, they turn him into a jackass who just says one word. Bomb. 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 Great fucking dialogue. Thank you for putting that into the script. That was meaningful and insightful. I fucking hate this movie. So yeah, Batman and Robin is an abomination against humanity, and it should be erased from the history books, and even mentioning its name should be punishable by death. Woo! You know what I need to do right now? I need to chill. I'm sorry, I had to do it. One last pun from Batman and Robin. So anyway, guys, that's my top 10 worst comic book movies of all time. Now here's my question to you, and let me know down below in the comments, what is your number one worst comic book movie of all time? So anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>